Alrighty then. I don't really know how to start this video. Liz Merrick, I just made a recipe and it turned out terrible. I only changed the measurement from weights to cups and everything went wrong. What went wrong? Coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz and Dan here today. We're talking about how to measure your ingredients and recipes, why you should use cups or a scale and when to use them. So many people have been super frustrated with their recipes not turning out right because of the confusion between ounces and cups, grams and fluid ounces. So we're going to settle all of this today and do a few fun tests to explain why measuring by volume is so inaccurate and why you should be using a scale instead. When you're cooking food for dinner, you can just do whatever you want, you know? Like, oh, I don't have this oil, I'll just throw this other oil in, or right. oh, I don't have this ingredient, I'll improvise. You can't do that with baking. No, baking, unfortunately, is a science that requires extreme accuracy, and unfortunately, the way that U.S. recipes are created, it's often, you know, with cups, because that's what we're familiar with, but it's actually the hardest way to measure ingredients. Getting rid of the cups. So today I have my guest baker, <laughs> Dan. And uh, Dan, do you bake? No. At all? No. <laughs> Ever? I might have baked cookies once. Average Joe Baker here is representing everybody who comes to the blog and they don't know how to use a scale, which is pretty much everybody, unless yeah. you're a professional baker. Okay, so these are the tools that you probably feel are you're familiar with. Yes, I've seen these. I've seen these before. <laughs> You've washed these before and put them in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, these are volume measurements. This is generally what Americans use to measure their ingredients. Doesn't have anything to do with the weights. It's just like, however much I can fit in this cup, that's a cup. Right. Right. So uh, when you're using these tools like it's totally fine most american recipes are based off of these tools and if there's a little variation here or there it's not that big of a deal but for professionals and you not you <laughs> this can be problematic because they're not super accurate especially when you're doubling and tripling your batter right 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 yeah so this is a dry measuring cup for measuring dry things what's a dry ingredient like something that isn't wet Good, good. So flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda. This one is for liquid ingredients. And that is because if you were to fill this guy up to the brim with water, it'd be a little bit difficult. Right. To measure, right? If you had an earthquake. Ah, right. You'd go everywhere. And then we have measuring spoons. So I actually didn't even realize this. I have several different kinds of measuring spoons. One of them doesn't even say how much is in there. And one of them says 15 milliliters for a tablespoon. And then one says 14.79 milliliters. Oh geez, so if you were, if you had a recipe that was like three tablespoons of something and you like quadrupled it and you use this one instead of that one, you could be off by an entire tablespoon. And you can't just say, oh well. Good enough. <laughs> good enough, because especially for things like baking powder, that can really throw off your recipe. So uh, what I use, and prefer is the scale. This is a scale. It does not matter what type of scale you use. There's all different kinds. You can get them at Target. Most grocery stores have them. It's just much more accurate, right? Yeah, it's always gonna weigh a certain amount, right? Yeah, so a cup of cake flour and a cup of chocolate chips are gonna weigh differently, but oh, they're, right. they're yeah. gonna take up the same amount of volume. Okay, let's oh, okay. do a little test here. Here's some regular chocolate chips. I'm gonna get the minis real quick. Okay, so if you're gonna scoop a cup of chocolate chips okay. and you're a baker who doesn't know what they're doing, all right, go for it. So if you were making ganache- It would be it, delicious. And that's what you would do. You would just scoop it, right? I would probably even take one off the top. Just to I make would, sure, you know. But you're like not top. super concerned with it being level, you know? Yeah, you're just it's, like, yeah, it's that's a cup. a cup. That's a cup. Okay, and then I'm gonna do mini chocolate chips. I mean, that's what I would do. All right, put yours in the bowl. Uh, yep. Now let's test by weighing with our very accurate scale here. Okay. All right, so Dan's cup of chocolate chips weighs 6.5 ounces. Like it should. <laughs> Liz's chocolate chips weigh 
seven ounces. Oh. Okay. Okay. So not super different, but if we were multiplying That's this. That's half an ounce, that adds up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And no, we are not counting the weight of the bowl. I zeroed that out, we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> Kelsey, just for fun, tell me what Google says one cup of chocolate chips weigh. 6.2 ounces. Oh. So both of us were over. Yeah, and but we didn't measure incorrectly. Okay, so you might be like, duh, I know that different size chocolates weigh different things, and that seems very obvious, but uh, some things that look the same actually weigh different amounts as well. So cake flour, which we use in a lot of our recipes, and all-purpose flour, which we use in a lot of our recipes, way different amounts because of density. Oh man. I know. We're still going with volume and we're just, just driving home that <laughs> cups are very inaccurate. So my recipe, let's say, says I need eight ounces of flour. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to use ounces. I need to use cups. If you just Google how many ounces are in a cup, it's gonna say eight ounces. There are not eight ounces of flour in a cup. So the first mistake is you have to define what thing you're actually weighing. Google, how many ounces are in a cup of flour? A four, four and a quarter, four and five. So how many, how many ounces are in a cup of sugar? Can you talk in a Siri voice? There are 7.05 ounces. <laughs> and Zero five, we're getting into hundredths of an ounce. That's scary. So first of all, when you're trying to convert ounces to cups, that's just a bad idea in the first place because depending on who did the measuring, it's gonna be vastly different. In our recipes, it, one cup of flour is five ounces. So, but if you are another baker and you're like, in my recipes, one cup of flour is 4.5 ounces, you know, that's gonna cause problems. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. I just don't wanna sit here and be like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're both gonna scoop flour. Dan's just gonna scoop however he thinks he should be scooping. I'm gonna scoop however I think I should be scooping and then we're gonna test it out. But we All should right. be using the same type of flour. Okay, all right. I think you're supposed to like get it really in there. <laughs> Maybe like do the finger across, across the top. <laughs> Why are I'm you? I'm making such a mess. <laughs> I haven't even done like one cup of flour yet. They've got the white finger. That's a good point. All right, so now I'm gonna scoop flour. Probably not a good day to wear a black shirt, huh? Never. Oh, <laughs> no. Scoop. I don't even really use cups, so it's a little bit okay. weird for me. All right. All right, okay. so let's measure yours. Okay. This weighs six ounces. You win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> mine weighs the most, the most ounces. Yes. Yeah. All right, and then mine, 5.3 ounces. So even even the professional you know, measure, which everything I've read is you just scoop the flour, you kind of lighten it so it's not compacted. Okay. And then you just scoop it and you swipe off the top and that's the most accurate way of doing it. But okay. I was still over. So now just imagine if I needed four cups of flour in my recipe, each one of those discrepancies is going to be multiplied. So what just happened here? Something called compressibility. Oh. Flour is especially susceptible to being compressed, which is what you did. So you measured your way, I measured my way, two different measurements, problems. This is the inherent problem with using volume measurements. Well, yeah, and like if you had a cake recipe that was like 12 ounces or what, what's a normal amount? 12 ounces. 12 ounces and you're like, you go to Google and you're like, well, a cup is four ounces and then our cup, my cup was six ounces. Yes. And then I do that three times because I think it's four, yes. eight, 12. Yes. And then boom, I've got six, 12, 18. Yes. So I've added a whole extra cup of cake flour to my, to my mix without even thinking I did it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's not your fault if you're getting bad results using cups and you're using Google to convert. It's just the problem with using cups. We're getting rid of the cups. Okay, so now we're going to test liquid measuring cups. So the way that you wanna measure liquids is to actually use a liquid measuring cup, and I want you to pour what you think is one cup of liquids. Okay. So we know that one cup of water weighs eight ounces, so we're just gonna check and see what your uh, accuracy level is. Oh, okay, I see. So we're gonna put this in here. 
I am at nine ounces. So I'm off by a whole ounce. You are. So what did you do wrong? Nothing. You're, you, I know. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong and you still somehow magically managed to weigh an extra ounce in there. Okay. So if you're going to use cups, the first thing you need to do is pay attention to something called the meniscus. No, we're not talking about the muscle in your knee that tears if you're a sports person. Ouch. This little line at the top of the measuring cup here is called the meniscus and it distorts light and your vision. So when you're looking down from up here, it looks like you're at one cup. Oh, okay. So Dan, what okay. I want you to do is come down. You need come like down. a microscope. Come down. Oh my God, that line is like way above that. Yeah, that's, that's like an, a whole ounce above it. Exactly. Yeah. Like nine ounces. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the first tip for using you know, your measuring tools properly is when you are using your liquids cup for liquids as you should and you're measuring volume like water or milk or oil, then uh, you just need to make sure that you come down to eye level to make sure that the line is lined up with the top of your measuring cup. Last thing we're gonna talk about is measuring spoons real quickly. This is a volume measurement. What's volume again? It's the space that it takes up. Space that it takes up. So fun fact, uh, the UK and probably other parts of the world, uh, the, the size of their measuring spoons are different, just standard. So a tablespoon in the US is 14.7 milliliters, a tablespoon in the UK is 15 milliliters, and a tablespoon in Australia is a whopping 20 milliliters. There's nobody like testing measuring spoons. Like, you wanna make measuring spoons? Well, let's, let's just check for accuracy. Is it exactly 15 milliliters? Like, no, they don't care. Some person's just like, I'm gonna make cute measuring spoons and sell them at my shop, you know? Right. It could be vastly different. So it's important for you to know that if you're in a different part of the world and you're following a, a US recipe that you're using US measuring spoons. Okay, so that brings us to using a scale. In place of all of the cups and the measuring spoons and all of that jazz. So, a scale. Seems scary. Have you ever used a scale to weigh anything? I think you uh, have. Myself. <laughs> Not that kind of scale, this is a food scale. Uh, this is one I use in pastry school. You can get it on Amazon. This brand is my way. <laughs> I'm going to weigh it my way. I appreciate a good pun. You don't have to use this one. You can use any food scale you like. So uh, if you've never used a scale, you might be like, ah, that's too scary. I don't understand why. So let's just talk about the basics of using a scale. There is the power button. Turn on the scale, right? Okay. It's ready to be weighing things. There's different modes, ounces, grams, pounds and ounces. Okay, so the first thing, let's set this to ounces. Okay. So press mode, ounces. Done. <laughs> now let's weigh uh, five ounces of flour, let's say. Okay. So you take your bowl. Set it on there. Set it on there. This bowl weighs 12 ounces. We don't want to include that in the, <laughs> in the weighing. Okay. So you're going to press something called tear. Sometimes the button is also called zero. We're just saying scale, ignore this bowl. Oh, anything sitting on top. Yep. Right, okay. And then you're going to scoop. This is the only thing that these cups are good for. It's just, just for moving the material around. Yeah, you don't wanna like pour with the bag cause then it's just gonna go. Okay, and then I just pour it right in, right? You just pour it right in until you get to five. Okay. Uh, I went over. Oh, you went over, oh my God, what are you gonna do? Take some out. Just take some out. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. There, there we go. go. Five ounces. Look okay. at that. So my recipe calls for five ounces of flour. You know you have exactly five ounces of flour in there. You didn't have to try and convert. You didn't have to like guess. Right. Yeah. You just you just didn't scale. have to pack it in or not. Yeah. 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 And this isn't just my recipes. It's most professional recipes. This is how we learn to weigh our ingredients in pastry school. I'm not trying to be bougie. It's not about what's better. It's it's literally about what's just being accurate so that your recipes turn out. Well, you don't want to waste ingredients too. I mean, I've seen people that, that they try to make a cake recipe and then they end up having to throw away all their ingredients because one of the measurements was off. And that, that can cost a lot of money in the long run. So you don't want to do that. So now let's talk about weighing liquids. So I know we talked about this is a, a liquid measuring cup. Oh yeah, yeah. So in my recipes, it will say like eight ounces of 
milk. So some person decided that they were going to name fluid ounces, <laughs> fluid ounces, even though it's volume, and then ounces for measuring by weight is by weight. That's two completely different things. So it's very confusing. Yes, if you're measuring milk or oil or water, eight ounces is probably gonna be eight ounces. But if you're measuring applesauce, we learned, or oil or some other liquid ingredients, eight ounces is not always eight ounces. So web developer thing, that's like Java and JavaScript. Not alike <laughs> at all. <laughs> some nerdy person is like, yes. <laughs> Yeah. So let's just get that out of the way. Fluid ounces and regular ounces are not the same thing. Fluid ounces is volume, regular ounces is weight, okay? okay. So why? I don't know, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if I'm going to measure out eight ounces of water. I, I gotta hit the tear button first. Tear? Yep. Tear it. Tear. So let's say we're measuring our liquid ingredients for a cake recipe and Dan needs eight ounces of water. 8.1. 8.1, that's fine. Yeah. If you look here, it's like a tiny bit over the line. It's not super duper exact okay. for volume. So if you were like using fluid ounces, you'd have to measure eight ounces of applesauce and then eight ounces of oil and then eight ounces of butter. And, the, and you have like four measuring cups that are all, and then you gotta transfer those to another cup. When you're measuring liquid ingredients, okay, we have eight ounces of water, right? Tear. Oh. Now I need two ounces of oil. I bet if you were a witch, you'd, this would come in handy. <laughs> I need, I need, like you know, four ounces of blood. I need th two three. eyes of newt. <laughs> I need six ounces of toad. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, two ounces, like something like that. That's a little bit hard to do in a in a volume measuring cup because there is no two mark on there That's true. or two and a half. Yeah. And then okay, now I need four ounces of milk. You put, hit the tear button again, right? Hit the tear button, four ounces of milk. One cup, less dishes. So then you might be asking, well, what if my recipe does not have weight? How do I, how do I use it? You might have grandma's recipe that calls for one cup of butter, one cup of flour, you know, all of that. So you can convert all of your recipes to weight. Just scoop a cup of flour, just like you normally would, and then weigh it and then write that down. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so. So if it's four glugs of this and two glugs of that, yeah. you just do that and then you weigh it and then you know that that's what, you, what you're going after every time. Exactly. So I do have a conversion chart on the blog post on sugargeekshow.com if you wanna see what my versions of all of, like one cup of flour is this, one cup of sugar is this, that I use for my recipes. But uh, so if you wanna convert a recipe that you haven't tried, you know, you can use my conversion chart, but just keep in mind, it may not turn out because who knows what that person was doing when they were scooping, right? They might've been crazy. They might've been packing it in like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it guys. That's why you should toss all of your volume measuring cups in the trash, buy a scale, use a scale, make better cakes. I'm Liz Merrick and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.